Father, we hand over your word unto you. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And by him were all things made, and there was nothing that was made without him. And in him is the light of the world. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Lord, I pray that the darkness of this world will not prevail over the light of your word in us in Jesus' name. Give us, Lord, understanding. Bless us as we share together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are going to look at something that we all know about, but which many a times we take for granted. Something that many a times occurs, but because we don't pay close attention to it, we get caught up with it. We get caught up in it. We get overwhelmed by it, and before we know it, our backs are on the floor. The Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There are a lot of people that think, well, because I'm a Christian, I am free from all the battles of life. I am free from all the problems of life. Oh, yes, I am now in heaven. Honey, you are not in heaven yet. While you are on this path of eternity, there is a battle for you to fight. I'm talking on the subject of prepare for battle. Somebody say, prepare for battle. Somebody say, prepare for battle. Can you turn to someone and tell somebody, prepare for battle? The, bat the word battle stands for conflict. It stands for fighting. It stands for clash or clashes. It stands for combat. It stands for encounter. It stands for scuffle. Job chapter 14 verse 1 tells us that man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of what? Trouble. That is battle right there. And may I submit to you that the battle you've got to face, the battle I've got to face, is not something that started after we were born. No, sir. The battle began before we got to our mother's womb. The battle began the very moment that the decision for us to come into the world was made. Because the devil at that point did not want you to make it to the world. Don't you know there are many, many pregnancies that never succeed, that never made it to life? Don't you know there are many children that were born, and as soon as they were born, they gave up the goals? Not that alone. There were some that after their birth, there were joys and jubilations. And there was hope of a better future and a glorious future. But while the joy was still there in their heart, it was cut short. The man was gone. The woman was gone. Yes, a baby, but a man in the future. A woman in the future. Never, never saw the light of the day. John chapter 16 verse 33 says, Those things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. God will give you peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That is the confidence that we have. Because he lived, we shall live. Because he overcame, we shall overcome in Jesus' name. Salvation does not preclude or prevent us from the battle of life. Whether we like it or not, it is not optional. You cannot say, well, I don't want to fight. You don't want to fight, but the enemy wants to fight. You are not prepared, but the enemy is always prepared to take advantage of you, to ruin your life, your future, your career, to turn you to a non-entity. But the Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. Paul the Apostle, in one of his writings, especially to the Corinthians, he told them, he said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, Ephesians, 
Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. What do you see today? The first sin of humanity is disobedience. That was the first sin in the Garden of Eden. And that is what is happening in our world today. The devil is at war with you. He's at war with me. He's at war with the church. He's at war with the nations. He's at war with families. He's at war everywhere. He's not a man of peace. But Allah will give you peace. Bestow says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. A lot of things are happening in the world today. Confusions and commotions. A lot of children are dying at the flower of their age. A lot of them are having their lives turned upside down. Because the promise that came with the honor that ought to be given to the parents, the promise is not there for them. They dishonor their father. They dishonor their mother. And then, instead of promises of blessing, curses are coming upon them. And you know the bad part of it? When they are doing those things to their parents, they think, yes, I can do that. I can do that. Hey, when they grow old, their children do worse things to them. And so things are getting worse. And worse and worse. But for us in the faith, things will turn out better for us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in verse 3 that it may be well with you. Children, listen to me. The reason why you are disobedient to your parents and rebellious to your parents is because the enemy wants to destroy your future. You lose nothing by obeying your parents. You lose nothing by submitting to the leadership of your parents. But when you disobey, there is a law that comes to work. And instead of blessing, it's a cause. I pray that every cause upon your life shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. It says that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on earth. And ye fathers, fathers, there is a word for you. There are fathers that don't take care of their children. There are mothers that are not there for their children. There are parents that don't do their part in the family. It says, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to rot, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Now it says, servants. You see, the Bible is for everybody. Whether you are rich or poor, whether you are old or young, whether you are male or female, whether you are the leader or you are being led, the word of God is for every one of us. But why is it that we're having issues and problems? Because of the battle. The enemy is at work. Somebody say one thing, meant one thing, the other person had it and had wrong, had it and misinterpreted it, and there is trouble. Somebody meant to say one thing, he mistakenly said another thing, and the other one said, aha, you said that, and then there is trouble. The Lord will give us victory. Servants, oh, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service or as men please us, but as the servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. There are a lot of servants, workers in the church, maids at home, that are not serving from the heart. And yet they don't understand. That they're not hurting their monster. Who are they hurting? Themselves. Because the Bible says that if you cannot take care of that which belongs to another person, who will give you that which is your own? It is when you are faithful in other men's matter that God will give unto you your own and you will be faithful in it and you will prosper in it. 
when I look at the young man, Joseph, Joseph was blessed because he was faithful as a young man, as a teenager. When I look at Daniel and the rest of them in the Bible, it's because of their faithfulness. If you want to be blessed in life, be a faithful man. But why is it that people are not faithful? The battle. The battle. The devil trying to make you to wanting to cut corner. It's a corner into destruction. You will not go that route in Jesus' name. Amen. I need a better one. Amen. Now let's quickly jump into verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord, not in your will. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, somebody read that for me. Put on the whole armor of God. What do you do with armor? I said, what do you do with armor? To fight. It's saying, get ready for battle. Ready for battle. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, strategies and devices of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in where? Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, not some of the armor, not many of the armor, not most of the armor, but how many? Somebody shout all. The Lord will give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins got about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I will come back to that passage. We look at three points. Number one, the certainty of warfare and the battle of life. The certainty is definite. Oh, somebody say, well, I have crossed the line. It doesn't matter at what stage of your life. You will fight one battle or the other. The certainty. Point number two. The certified weapons for warfare and the battle of life. There are weapons that are certified there are weapons that are approved. There are weapons that are real, genuine, original. And there are weapons that are fake weapons. Untested weapons. But we're talking about certified ones. The ones that are certified and approved by the power of the Holy Ghost. The one that is, that, 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 that is founded in the name of the Lord. Point number three. Coronated winners of warfare and the battle of life. Coronated. We're talking about winners. Honorable, dignified people. Let's come back to point one. Somebody remind me point one. The certainty of warfare and the battle of life. Come back to that job where we read. Now. Job was a wise man and a man full of understanding. Job was a man that had direct connection with God. The book of Job actually happened about the time of the book of Genesis. Don't worry about the positioning in the Bible. And Job, from experience and by revelation, He's making us to know that man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He had his own chair of it. Abraham had his own chair of the trouble. And whoever you are, 
you have your own share. The apostles have their own share. Jesus did also. So get ready for battle. It's better you are prepared than not being prepared because it will come. According to the dictionary, when we use the word battle, it is a military conflict between two or more armed forces that are well defined in duration, defined in area, defined in force commitments. They know what they are up to. And in the world today, you look at the armaments of the various nations. You can tell that the United States has the most armory with weapons in those armories. And then you go from the United States, the next one is Russia. And you look at United States and Russia, they are always at loggerhead. Competition is always there. God forbid any outbreak of war. And I can tell you the only reason, in my own opinion, why they have not really gone into war is because of the fear of, who can tell me? The nuclear weapon. Because with the nuclear weapon, you can just press the button and then everything is over. And that's why they're concerned about some nations of the world, like Iran, building their own nuclear weapon. Because those people can just wake up one day and say, we are mad with America. And they press the button. That is why, and I don't know if you follow the news, in the last regime, the last government in the United States, the latter part of it, there was fear all over the nation because there was a briefcase that they carry along with the president. That thing carries the secret code. And so we're concerned, if this man gets mad and changes his mind, that. I lose election, you all lose your life. So everybody became very careful what they do and what they don't do. Praise the Lord. All these are to tell you there are all kinds of weapons out there. The devil has his own weapon. It's not like all these earthly weapons we talk about. Of course, he can use them. He can use anybody to, to ignite any of those things. That's why we all must be prepared. But beyond that, on daily basis, he's attacking every humanity. And the moment you know that you are in the battlefield, the better for you because you know how to protect yourself. You know how to be vigilant and watchful and how to pray. And I have a good news for you. God is on your side. I said God is on your side. That is battle. Battle is something you know what you have. You know your enemy. Your enemy knows you. You know where you are going to fight. You know when you are going to fight. You know how you are going to fight, of course. Who determines the end of the battle? It's God. The Bible says that the, heart, the horse is prepared for the day of battle. But safety is of the Lord. Victory is of the Lord. So you that is getting the horse ready, don't rejoice as the one that is dismantling everything. Come now to warfare. Warfare is slightly different from battle. And yet they are all together. Warfare is an intense armed conflict as well between the militaries of the world, the governments of the world, the nations of the world, parties in the world. 
characterized by extreme violence, aggression, destruction, and mortality that stretches, pay attention, for many months and many a times years. Since 2001 till now, how many years? Somebody help me. This year will make it 20 years. America has been involved in a battle in Afghanistan. Have they won the battle? No. Because it's a warfare. Sometimes in warfare, you know, in battle, you know your enemy, the enemy knows you. This one you know so enemy, but you don't people, you don't know all your enemy. America went there with their uniform. Most of the people they are fighting, they are in mufti. Amen. The person walking side by side with you, you don't know is an enemy. And the worst of them is guerrilla warfare. That's exactly the way they operate. You don't see the enemy, you don't know the enemy, and yet the enemy is there. Now, look at this, warfare. United States has been in that country now for 20 years this year. 19, by September 11, it will be exactly 20 years. Pay attention here. They watch over the borders. They watch over the ports, the airport, the seaport, the land port, air, all the ports. And yet, weapons are being ported in. From where are they coming? Because the way this thing happened is unimaginable. I'm trying to use physical things to explain spiritual things to you. So that you don't sit idle thinking that all is well, when in reality, your life is in danger. The Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. Amen. The enemy is at war. Every man born of woman must fight this battle. And I tell you, it's not optional. Paul the Apostle tells us in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, it says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Can you see? Many doors of blessing, doors of opportunity, doors of progress are open. And you can see the door and say, Hooray, I'm going through. And yet, just before you cross over, the adversary comes and crosses your way. Says, great door, great door. Many of you are not supposed to be where you are today. You're supposed to have advanced further down, but the enemy is always there. The Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. In First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1, at the peak of peace in Israel, joy and progress in Israel, after David had conquered this nation, conquered that nation, conquered that nation, and he felt, oh yes, praise God, I'm doing fine. The Bible tells us in that passage, it says, and Satan stood up against Israel. May the Lord destroy all, every upstanding of the enemy against you. Every upstanding of the enemy against your family. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. The goal was to destroy the whole land. That David, if in the physical battle of life, you will not lose. Because God is working with you, I will make you to walk against God so that God can walk against you. That is the strategy of the enemy. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief cometh number four to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give us what? To give us the what? 
good news. Somebody say good news. And fly more abundantly. 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 Amen. Paul the apostle said, <laughs> in the work of the ministry, everything seems to be going fine. But he got to a point. Every effort he made were met with obstacles, with obstructions, with hindrances, with problems. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 18, he said, Wherefore we would have come unto you. Even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Can you see the battle now? Now, you say, well, the devil is after the sinners. No, it's not just after the sinners, it's after the saints as well. You say, the devil is after the poor. It's not just about the poor, it's after the rich also. Did you read the news a few days ago? One of the richest men in the world, one of those, the richest people in the world, that you think they have everything they need. In billions for many years, he was the number one person in the world. But now they divorce. What do you think that is? Warfare. Somebody say warfare. So that tells you that money is not everything. You have been thinking, oh, if only I have had money. It's not all about money. You are single. If only I can be married. No, it's not just about marriage. Don't you see people that thought, well, because I'm not married, that's why I'm into pornography. And after marriage, they are still in pornography. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. This warfare we are talking about comes in different and diverse ways. Don't take it lightly. I will give you some of them. There is no way I can tell you everything because I don't know what is going on in your life. In your family. I'll just give you an idea. So that when you see the handwriting on the wall, you know this is warfare, and then you know what to do. Amen? When you see a consistent hindrances and obstacles on your way, consistent delays and disappointments in your life, warfare. Sicknesses and diseases one after the other, one after the other, warfare. Matrimonial crisis that you're wondering, why are all this happening? Warfare. Unexplainable rebellion of children in the family. Warfare. Spiritual instability and upheaval. Warfare. Ministerial predicament. I told you about Paul. Warfare. In the ministry, you do everything that you needed to do, and yet there is no growth. You fasted, you prayed, you sought the law, you did everything, and then there is no gift. You went back to the Bible and say, the Bible say, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every part of the enemy, and nothing shall be. Nothing happened. Warfare. These signs, I follow them that believe. In my name, they cast a devil. Instead of you casting a devil, it's devil and demon following you. Warfare. 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 You get into a church in spite of all the preachings and the teachings of the word of God and the seminars and the, and the workshops and everything. There is disagreements. People that are supposed to be holy and righteous, shining as light in the world. Warfare. Because somebody, somewhere, somehow, has not allowed the work of God to be perfected in his or her life. Warfare. How about you are made the leader and you need the cooperation and the support of everybody, and then there are opposition. Do you know there are envy and jealousy in the church? Do you know that? That what you are doing, somebody wish they are the one doing it. 
where you are, somebody wish they are the ones that are there. War, fear. War, fear. War, fear. There are people that come to church. You think they are saints, but they are revenue wolves in sheep's clothing. And they create problems for you. War, fear. War, fear. The Lord will give us victory in Jesus' name. How about people in the church that ask holier than you are? Anything you do, the way they, the way they, the, the, the way they, they, they do their hair, the way they put their face together, and when they want to talk, they don't talk normal. They talk as if they have been to the third heaven and come back. And yet, inside of them is full of wickedness. Warfare. Warfare not to them, but to you that is wanting to do the best that you know to do. They are obstacles and obstructions in your life. How about communication breakdown? In the family, communication breakdown. In the nation, communication breakdown. In the church, communication breakdown. Everywhere. It's a warfare. Don't just look at the other person as the problem. Look at the spirit and the power behind it. Behind it. Husband and wife, think less of your spouse being your problem. There is a force behind what is going on. Haven't you seen people that are married? I'm talking about warfare. Married. No issue, no problem before wedding. After wedding, the woman couldn't check in. And then went for medical checkup. They checked everything from A to Z. And they said, you are fine. We can't see anything. And then they checked the man from A to Z. They couldn't find anything. And yet, infertilities in the family. Warfare. Warfare. Loss of job. And I'm telling you things that are real, not things that are making up. A lot of all this, I've had to deal with them in the lives of people. And some of them in my own life. Amen? Because we're all in it together. Somebody will get a job. I'm talking about real life story. As soon as he begins to put money together and begin to say, oh, this is the reward of my labor. That job is gone. And we become jobless until the last cent is spent. Before she could get another one. She may do that one for three months. And then it's gone again. And until the last cent is spent up. Well, Warfare. Have you not seen people, they go here, there are people against them. They quit that job, they go there, there are people against them. It's time for you to stop blaming the people, look inward. And say, Lord, whatsoever spirit that is following me wherever I go, I bind and cast them out in Jesus' name. Because they didn't know you before they hired you. They wanted it to be a blessing to them. But as soon as you got there, something you didn't see, something you didn't know showed up. Evil representation. You think you are you, but another figure is showing up representing you before them. And they said, no, we cannot tolerate this kind of a person. You had a good intention, but by the time you opened your mouth to speak, you began to speak <laughs> rubbish. And your boss said, okay, miss or mister, thank you so much. Warfare. Victory is coming in Jesus' name. You have labored and labored on your children. You labor by your life by your behavior, by your action, 
by your teaching, by your preaching, by your prayer, by your guidance, by your spending. Everything you knew to do, you did it. And yet, these kids are not born again. You think it's ordinary? There is another spirit. The Lord will give us victory over them all in Jesus' name. That's why I'm telling you, prepare for battle. Prepare for battle. Prepare for battle. I get to the second point. How do we fight this battle? Because if you are in a race or you are sporting, in order to win, you must play or run lawfully. Certified weapons for warfare. There are approved as well as unapproved weapons of war. And many a times, many of us have used the wrong weapons for the battle. And the outcome has been disastrous. The Lord will give us the right wisdom and the knowledge we will need in Jesus' name. You don't fight spiritual battle with carnal weapon. The Bible says that for the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God, not through you, not through your experience, not through your ability, not through your power, but through God. Through God. Through God. Earlier this morning, I was listening to the Bible. And the Bible talks about a mighty nation, a mighty army came to besiege a small city with all their military might. And yet, there was just one man in that small city who disarmed the military with wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. With all thy getting, get wisdom. And the Bible says get understanding also. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Only spiritually approved weapons will guarantee our victory. Because we are warring not against flesh and blood. Yes, those things come in the physical. Sometimes they appear normal. But in reality, they are spiritual battle. We war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness in high places. Second Corinthians chapter 10, looking at it from verse 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Don't war according to the flesh. Don't walk according to the flesh. So then, what are these approved weapons that we need to use? I'll run through them because of my time. Number one is watchfulness and prayerfulness. Watch and pray. Matthew 26, 41. Number two, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, be spiritually inclined. Be able to sense from your spirit mind. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, This I said then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh lost set against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. I need an amen. How do we fight this battle? Look up. Many of us, the way we fight is praying and praying and praying. Prayer is good. But please balance it up. 
The Bible says faith without work is dead. Most prayers are not answered because they are not prayed scripturally. Those prayers are not lining up with purity of heart, with holiness and righteousness. You are praying unto God, but there is bitterness in your heart. You are praying in your heart, but there is anger against your fellow brother and your fellow sister. Galatians chapter 5. Looking at it from verse 22. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Against such, there is what? There is no law. It says unto us, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, do what? Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. The Lord is speaking to us. Because he wants to give us victory in every area of our life. I told you from the beginning, whether you like it or not, the battle will come. The warfare will come. You have to fight. You have to fight. And we'll be told by the word of God that from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And tell me now, only the violent will take it by force. Do I tell you something? To get your victory is going to be by force. To get your promotion is going to be by force. To succeed as a Christian is going to be by force. It's not going to be just by jolly, jolly life of enjoyment. It's not going to be by just saying, oh, praise the Lord, brother. Oh, praise the Lord, sister. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Yeah, he's good. You are right. You are very correct. Hmm. But the battle is raging. God will be good to those that knows their right and do it. And do it. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. What kind of fruit are you bearing? Remember, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Do you love your fellow brother, your fellow sister? The good and the great thing you desire for yourself, do you desire for them? Or are you looking for the opportunity to backstab? Uh, how do they call it now in soccer? Where, and, then, uh, and, and then you slide them. So they can fall and then you get their place. Or even if you don't get it, so you can rejoice over them and say, huh? Even though I didn't get it, I'm glad that you miss it. Is that who you are? Joy. Joy. The joy of the Lord. Anything you do that is not bringing joy to God will not help you in your life. Joy. Are you happy at the progress of your fellow brother or fellow sister? Peace. Be at peace with all men. Let's look up here. When it comes to peace, let me explain this. 
You can only speak for yourself. You can't speak for your neighbor. But yourself, do everything within your power to be at peace with all men. If there is an odd go between you and the person, deal with it and move on. And if your sister, your brother say, I'm sorry, so let it be. Let bygone be bygone. Accept the apology. You don't turn around and say, God save your head that you apologize. That's not the spirit of meekness. That's not the spirit of love. Even if your brother is wrong and has wronged you, your goal is not for the destruction of that individual. But you know, when you don't forgive, you know what is happening? You are hurting yourself, you are working against your own forgiveness too. You are hindering your own prayer. And so you keep on praying. And you pray and you pray and you pray and then you add a person to your prayer. And what does God do? Somebody say something. Whatever you say, I, I can't hear you. Why? That is the Bible. Psalm 66, verse 16. If I regard iniquity in my heart, it is when you hear someone that you answer them. We are moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen? So, please, for goodness sake, learn to suffer long. These are approved weapons. Be gentle. Be gentle. Don't be rash. Be gentle. And then learn to do good to all men. What did I say? Learn to do what? Listen, 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 listen. It is the good you do to others that will come back to you. Am I communicating? It is the good you do to others. It may not be now. It may be later in life. Can I share this with you? This is a testimony to God's glory. Some years back, here in Washington, we started a location in one part of town. And then I sent somebody there as the pastor. And the fellowship was going on. And there was a brother there in that location who was into business. I think he quit his job and he started his own business. And it got to a point that everything just went shh. So he needed money. How much? $2,600. Amen. That will tell you how big the business was. Amen? Just to turn things around. And then he spoke with the pastor, and the pastor spoke with me. And I said, yeah, let's help him out. That's what the church should be. We should be there for one another. Amen? And then when it was time, things now began to turn around. So he now wanted to pay back. I said, no. That is our own investment into your business. It's a gift, it's not a loan. Take care of it. And God turns things around. Just like God will turn your life around. Just like God will turn your situation around. Amen? What a long story short, many years back. Everybody forgot about it. And all of a sudden, he showed up, I think about three weeks ago or so with a brand new 2021 Land Cruiser. $90,000 vehicle as a gift. And he said, Pastor, if I had not gotten, how much was it? 
Can you see? The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. And after many days, what will happen? You'll have it back. And he said, if I had not gotten that money at that time, that would have been the end of my life. The end of the business and everything. It was a small thing, but that little seed, God breathed on it. Multiplied it. To the point that now the same person could afford to give that much. For goodness sake, be a blessing to somebody. Turn to someone and say, be a blessing. And the Lord will bless you. Now, the challenge is, I can tell you, there are a lot of people we've had that I have had personally. If I tell you how many, I have used my personal credit card, either to pay their school fees, or to do this, or to do that, and at the end of the day, it's a loan, they say, but at the end of the day, if I don't want my credit and my life to be ruined in America, I have to pay everything myself. I'm, I'm talking of in thousands. Now, if I say because of those people now, this one is in need, and then I close my eye. Listen. If you close your eyes that a bad person will pass away, by the time a good person is passing, you will never see. Am I communicating, please? Maybe God is going to bless you in the future, and then there is this temptation on your way, and you yield that to the temptation, you hinder your blessing in the future. So please, no matter what anybody has done to you, don't give up because of that. Don't give in because of that. Don't behave because of that. That may be just a temptation. A temptation. A temptation. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Always think, I will tell you this is my prayer. I, 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 have, I must have told you before. Because this is my life. That Lord, help me to be a blessing to my generation. And you know, because if you are walking with one leg, you are hopping. Right? But when you have two legs, are you able to walk well? Amen? So I balance the prayer. What's the first prayer? Somebody, somebody didn't hear you. Can you say it again? Help me to be a blessing to my generation. So I balance the prayer. Oh God, make my generation a blessing to me. Amen? So that as I'm blessing, they are blessing me too. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? For with the same measure that you made, it shall be measured unto you also. The scripture cannot be broken. Amen? Some of you are the ones working against your own blessing. It's not the devil. It's not the witch. It's not the wizard. Come back to the scripture. Let my enemy die. That is not the kind of prayer we should pray. Amen? Let my enemy live so that they will see. Huh. The glory of God. The greatness of God. The power of God in my life and through my life. You pray, oh Lord, can I speak a grammar here? Freedom to speak. This is America, right? You pray, oh Lord, bless me, nyafu, nyafu. Amen? You won't find that one in the dictionary anyway. Praise the Lord. That means bless me immensely. Yep, yep, I don't know the language. Praise God. So don't ask me which language is that. Bless me. Listen, listen, listen. I'm quoting the scripture. He said unto Abraham, he said, in blessing, help me here. I will bless you. And 
in such a way that through you, the families of the earth will be blessed. Amen? You shall be well with somebody here. Don't war against yourself. The Bible says there is he that hold it more than is necessary and it tended to poverty. You will not be poor. But there is another one that is scattering and yet is increasing more. The liberal show so shall be made far. Somebody is about to be blessed. Somebody's story is about to change. Amen. Amen. The devil doesn't want it to happen. That is a battle, but you will overcome in the name of the Lord. So walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Be meek. Be temperate in all that you do. Walk in wisdom. That's the next thing. Walk in wisdom. Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6, walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Wisdom to communicate. Wisdom to communicate. Wisdom to talk. Brother, wisdom to communicate. Sister, wisdom to communicate. Children, wisdom to communicate. Wisdom. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Be, but sanctify the Lord in your heart. Sanctify the Lord in your heart. Honor the Lord in your heart. In your life. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Amen. Number four, wait on God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle, as eagle. Not like eagle, but as eagle. You are an eagle, you will soar high. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Number five, walk by faith. Walk by faith. It says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. A lot of things will happen that will make it look like all hope is gone. No, hold on to God. He never failed. He never failed. At the age of mighty, Sarah was blessed. At an old age, Rebecca was blessed. Whatever your expectation, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, there will be a little delay to test your faith. But as you hold on to the Lord, He will make ways for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Third point, coronated winners of warfare and the battle of life. Coronated winners. Celebrated winners. Celebrated winners. Who are those winners I'm talking about? I'm one of them. Heaven will celebrate me. Heaven will celebrate you in Jesus' name. Engagement in the warfare of life does not automatically guarantee victory that you are in a battle doesn't mean you, you, you have won already. It takes fighting lawfully and fighting till the end. Lawfully, lawfully, mark that word, fight lawfully. And fight till the end. And then the victory will come in Jesus' name. Fight with the word of God. Fight in the name of the Lord. Fight with the power of the Lord. Fight in holiness, with righteousness, uprightness. And when we say fight, you are not confronting anybody. You just, listen, the Bible says, if God be for us, this is the battle now. If God be for us, who? 
can be against us. Nobody. Let me tell you how to fight again. 